of putting. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so this morning we learned that there's a state of emergency declared for the entire parish of St. James. You know, this is a strategy that the government has been um, relying on for the last five years. We don't think it's a valid strategy. That's why we're testing it in court. Um, we understand the need to respond very strongly to what happened uh, in South Spring community. And I want to extend condolences to the parents and family of the two young boys who were killed in that awful incident. You know, we heard Heroy Clark yesterday in Parliament call for a Zozo in the community. Now, the zones of special operations are something that we support, um, you know, in appropriate cases, and we feel that that would be the right mechanism to deploy here. The states of emergency, as you know, we um, do not think that they can be validly used as a policing tool. And they haven't worked because the crime problem in the country continues. What we need is social interventions to redirect youth at risk away from crime and we need serious strategies for law enforcement to ensure that hardened criminals, violence producers are effectively addressed and cases are built that can hold them accountable and ultimately put them behind bars for long periods of time and we're committed to that balanced strategy. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't think you can just look at murder in isolation because mandatory minimum sentences are being imposed now on firearm offences as well. And the volume of firearm offences is significant. So between that and murder, murders always had mandatory minimum sentences. You know What they're doing is increasing those minimums from 15 years and 20 years, which is what exists now for non-capital capital murder. And I think they're proposing 40 and 50 years. And when you add to that the mandatory minimum sentence for firearms offences, what you're going to have is a growing prison population because people will be in prison for much longer. So whereas the average duration of a prisoner in Jamaica is approximately, across all offences from minor to major, is I believe in the region of three years, that is going to be a much higher number going forward. How are they all going to fit? Where are the rehabilitation programs to try and reorient those people who have committed crimes so that when they come back into society they're no longer a threat to the rest of us these the consequences of these measures need to be thought through and implemented you know so i don't hear the government talking about these things um yes we all understand the the need to be firm when it comes to dealing with serious criminal offenses and we're in favor of that but we need to also think through the impact the impact and implications of changing the rules in this way for example, the backlog in the criminal justice system, which has been cleared as a result of reforms that I implemented as Minister of Justice to encourage guilty persons to plead guilty and get a discount so that they um, get out of the court system and into the prison system much quicker. With the new mandatory minimum sentences, that is now a, cog in, uh, a spoke in the wheel. So you're going to have many more cases that would have been dealt with through a guilty plea now going to trial in the gun court and so on the court system is going to be overwhelmed by that so these are some of the things that need to be thought through before you start talking about massive the increased sentencing rules you know i just think you need to have a holistic approach when you're dealing with the criminal justice problem and it's not just on the back end which is the courts and the prison system. But it's on, why is it that we have so many young people going into criminal activity? What's happening in the early childhood and primary schools that result in children matriculating to secondary and they're not ready for it? They can't handle the secondary curriculum. They leave with nothing to show for it. And those are the ones that are vulnerable to being swayed into crime. We need to have an overall strategy that deals with both sides of the problem. And this government really doesn't understand that. All right, thank you.